Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-Level Maths. Here we're looking at domain and range, a little bit of a tricky topic, a little bit of a niggly topic that students typically struggle with. So we can answer questions from exercise 2b. So let's go ahead and have a look at what domain and range stands for. Well, When we were talking about mappings, we were talking about input values getting mapped to output values. But now we're just going to give input and output a bit more of a posher word. Input is domain and range is output. So when you think of domain, think of the x coordinates, and when you think of range, think of the y coordinates. Now, what's going to be useful in working out the range is drawing a graph so that we can see well what y values will eventually be mapped to when we consider the whole of our domain. Now, sometimes the domain is any number, any real number. So when, um, when we say any real number, we don't generally write any real number in a sentence like that. Instead, we write x exists in, so it's like a C with a line through it. This symbol here means exists in. So exists in. And then a capital R with an extra line on the side of it. And this means here the set of real numbers. Okay, so x exists in the set of real numbers. So this is just our fancy mathematical posh way of writing x can be any number. Now what we're going to look at in this video is in multiple different ways and multiple different trip hazards for working out um, a range and you're typically given the domain when you're given a question. So for example here we're given x squared plus 4x minus 1 that's our function and then this part here is the domain. So we can clearly see here that we're going to substitute any, um, any type of number uh, in any type of real number into this type of function here. And what we need to consider now is uh, calculate the range of this function. So we need to consider all the possible outputs that will be derived from by substituting in every x value into this function. Now one way of doing it is to substitute in every x value into this function, but you may be there for quite a long time. As far as I can remember, if we've got an x squared plus 4x minus 1 function, it's going to go through at minus 1, at least. But then what might happen to it is it might look a little bit like this. Now, the range is effectively all of these input values, these output values down here that the x coordinates have been transformed to. So up until this point here, it's all of this set of values here that is our range. Now really what we'd quite like to be able to work out here is this minimum coordinate here. How can we work out a minimum coordinate? When we've got a quadratic, we can complete the square. So in this case here, I'm going to complete the square and it's going to be x squared plus 2, sorry, x plus 2 all squared, and then I need to minus 4 and minus the 1, so it's going to be minus 5. So my function could be rewritten as x plus 2 all squared minus 5. Now what does that mean? It means that the minimum point of my graph is going to be at minus 2 minus 5. Why minus 2? Well, because think of it as a graph transformation. If it's adding on 2 inside the bracket of an x squared function, you move it left by 2. So it's going to be at minus 2, and the minus 5 on the end will move it down by 5. So that means that the range for this question here is y is bigger than or equal to minus 5. Okay, the range is effectively what are the possible y coordinates that we can get when we use every x coordinate into this um, function here. So y is bigger than or equal to minus 5. And sometimes it's better to write f of x is greater than or equal to minus 5. Okay, so it's from here to here, it's the possible y coordinates. Draw yourself a graph um, and it looks like this. So this is our answer.
and um, using the complete and the square is a good way of dealing with quadratic type functions. Um, in, in example 2 here we have a 1 over x graph the domain here is a little bit more tricky it's x is any real number but x is not equal to 0 now why do we have to have that x is not equal to 0 value on it well if you remember the 1 over x graph it has asymptotes at 0 or in other words you can't substitute in 0 into this function because you'll get 1 over 0 which is um, not existing Okay, now what we have to do here is we have to consider what are the possible y-coordinates. Well, the possible y-coordinates will go up to infinity as x gets closer towards 0, and it will go down towards minus infinity as x gets closer towards 0 as well on the other side, on the negative side. But it's never going to equal 0. So the answer to this question here is that f of x exists in the real set of numbers, and exactly the same thing here, but f of x cannot equal 0. So if you want to say that your function can be any number but not a certain number, then you write f of x exists in the real set of numbers, comma, and that means effectively but um, f of x cannot equal 0. Okay, we've got a few more to get through, so let's carry on. Um, the function for sine x, so the sine x graph. And notice here, whenever I'm doing these sorts of questions to do with domains and ranges, I'm drawing the graph. x can be any real number, so this is just going to carry on and on, going backwards and forwards in the positive and negative direction. But we know here that the graph as a minimum and a maximum is not going to go out of 1 or minus 1. And that's the, effectively the set of y-coordinates that all of our input numbers will give us. So the answer to this question here is that f of x exists in between minus 1 and 1 inclusive. So that's our answer. It's effectively draw the graph and write out what are the possible y-coordinates for our graph. In this question here we have modulus of x plus 3. So that's the modulus f, so modulus x graph moved up 3. So it's going to look something like this. And it's going to keep on going, it's going to keep on going upwards there. So the possible y coordinates that we can use this time are from 3 upwards. So the answer to this question here for the range is f of x is greater than or equal to 3. This is the range for this function the possible set of y coordinates for this type of function. Another one, e to the x. Now, if you remember, 2 to the power of x is very similar. It's an exponential graph where it will have an asymptote at 0. It will go through at 1. Now, what we've got here is a graph where we've only got y coordinates on the top of the graph. So our range is going to be f of x is greater than 0. It's never going to equal 0 because it's going to be asymptotically getting closer towards 0, but it never actually will equal 0. Now, the Lunex graph, I'll show you a nifty little trick in another video, but the Lunex graph looks a little bit like this, and it will carry on up to infinity on the right-hand side, and it will come down towards 0, it's down towards minus infinity as it gets closer towards zero. The domain here has to be slightly different because for the Lunex graph, you can never learn a negative number. Um, so there's nothing on the left-hand side of this graph. That's why the domain looks slightly different for this question. The range, however, as the Lunex graph is going to go up and up and up and up on the uh, top right of the graph, that's going to keep on going up and up and up and up and up. Um, and this one here is going to go down and down and down and down and down. Uh, f of x is going to be any real number. The y coordinates here are going to go up to infinity, and the y coordinates are going to go down to infinity as well. So this is the range for this question here. And typically questions will be, find the range for this function. Okay, a couple more then. 2x squared plus 3 where the domain this time is only in between 1 and 3. So I'm not going to draw the whole graph for this type of question here. 
what I'll do is I'll draw the coordinate for 1, so that would be um, 2 times 1 squared, which is 2, add 3 is 5. Now, because it's less than um, and not equal to 1, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an empty circle at 1, and I think we worked out the coordinate there was 5. And then I'm going to do the same for 3, so 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18, plus 3 is 21. So I'll draw another empty circle up here at 21. And I'm going to connect the two using an approximate x squared graph. So it's going to look roughly like this. Now what's going to happen here is that the range of values in this case here are just in between 5 to 21. Not including 5 and not including 21. Okay. So that's how we work out the range for this type of function here. Now, for example, 8 here, this is quite a little bit of a tricky question here. It's a split function where it has two different functions depending upon what the value of x is. So up to the value of x equals 1 from the negatives, it's the x squared graph. So in this case here, it's going to come down and up and stop at 1. So we'll have a circle where 1 is. And then it's going to be 3 minus x um, when x is equal to 1 or more. So let's put in 1 here. Uh, so we stopped at 1 there as well. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So we're going to put a circle here that's filled in this time because it's equal to it. It's going to stop at 2, and then the graph for this one here is going to go um, downwards because it's going to have a gr negative gradient because it's got a negative x there. And it's going to look like that. So the range for this function here, as it's going to go up and up and up on the left-hand side and down and down and down on the right-hand side, then the range is going to be all the possible set of y-coordinates that's f of x exists in the real. Now there's a little bit of a gap from here to here. That doesn't matter because every um, output number such as 1.5 here will have at least one um, input number that will go to it. Okay, so this here is what we call a split function. It's where we've got two different functions and the functions are split over a certain point um, such as this. Okay, and this is how we draw the graph for it. All right then, so your turn to have a go at these two questions here then. So I've shown you roughly how we do um, A and C. Have a think of um, question B as well. Um, yeah, pause the video, draw the graphs, because that's quite a useful um, a piece of um, information or a useful guide to how your range is going to look. Okay, so 5a. Let's have a look at 5a. It's the 2 sine x graph, but it's only in between 0 to 180. So I think it's going to go up, down, but by that point it's going to come down now. It's, it's reached 180, and it's 2 sine x. So it's just been stretched out by a factor of 2. So the range here is going to be at this possible range of values here. That's to say that f of x is in between 2 and 0. So that's the answer for part A. Part B, now if you don't know already, the graph for the square root of x looks a little bit like this. Um, we're going to start at minus 2 here because we've moved, we've transformed this graph left by 2 because it's a transformation of addition 2 inside the brackets, that means it moves left by 2. Now, in this case here, if we can include minus 2, which we are allowed to do, then the answer to this question here is that f of x exists, sorry, um, it's going to go up and up and up to infinity this time. So as long as f of x is greater than or equal to 0, we're OK. In this case here, you don't need to write f of x is any number. And part C, now part C, log is just effectively the same as ln, 
um, log of any base number and it doesn't really matter what base number you're going to use it still looks roughly the same as this sort of diagram here it's going to get stretched up by a factor of seven so it's going to be seven times higher and seven times lower but that really doesn't affect the range because it's going to be any real value anyway okay so those are the answers to five a, B, and C. Have a go at lots of other questions to do with domains and ranges from exercise 2B. Have lots of practice because this question does usually come up in an exam, um, so you are going to have to get used to it. It's only a couple of marks, so you should be able to get it pretty quickly once you get used to drawing the graph and considering the range of Y coordinates for this type of graph. Thanks for watching.